Hello, and welcome to what's bubbling at Zim. <laughs> got, got an extra one there. Uh, I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to look at what's new in Zim 9.3.0. In the last bubbling, we took a look at the new Zim tag, uh, which is exciting. That allows you to overlay any HTML. Uh, tag makes a div for you, and you just put anything you want in there. Uh, so have a look at that bubbling, and then in this one we're going to take a look at the improvements to the Zim Pen. So here we are. There we draw a line. Whoop whoop. Oops, <laughs> that's a pretty ugly line. Let's undo that line. There we go. So we've got an undo. And we can also pick these things up and drag them. Oh, yes. <laughs> what am I making? Uh, let's put that over there. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and so again, an undo, dot, 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 and a redo if we want. Weep, 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 weep. Um, and we can delete something. Oh, we saw that with a shift delete or a double click and double click and delete. And that's all configurable as well. So isn't that cool? Uh, multiple undos. Um, dragging individual sections, deleting individual sections as well. So let's go into some code, see how that's done. So this is the pen undo example in Explore. We're in 9.3.0 uh, and we're making a pen, the pen type. Oh, uh, why do I have no damping? Oh, because I put it into a motion controller. So I've turned off the pen's damping. Uh, I have an undo level of 30. By default, by default, we're starting off with an undo of zero, so basically no undo. Um, I don't think that there's actually a concern with a level of 30 uh, as we're you know saving all these shapes and stuff like that. But if you're just making a kids app and they just want to draw something, maybe they don't won't know about undos or whatever. Who knows? Um, but uh, you would. I want you, the developer, to know that you're turning those undos on that that functionality is there. Otherwise, it can be kind of hidden. Maybe you you make a pen and you wouldn't even realize you can undo it, and you didn't want them to undo it. But anyway, there you go. So you you'll have to turn as developers. You'll have to turn the undo on. Crop scale of three is if you're going to be dragging these around. You probably want a by default uh, this. The system is cached, so the, the lines you're drawing are cached into a bitmap. That means it doesn't have to store all of the little shapes that it's making. It doesn't have to store the vector information for all of those. So it's probably better that you leave the caching on. You don't have to. There's not really much different. P possibly you get a touch better quality if you don't cache, but it's really, uh, it's really not much of a difference. When you do cache, though, we have to decide how big to cache. And if you're dragging things around, there's a possibility that uh, you might drag it off the screen a bit, and then we cache it. And when you drag it back on, it's cut. It's cut at the size of the stage. So by setting a crop scale of three, uh, that's it has at least a stage on the left, a stage above, and a stage on the right, and a stage below, sort of thing. That you have to work with uh, dragging things, and I think that probably will be fine for you. So those are some of the new parameters, or a couple of them, the undo and the crop scale. There's parameters that will help you affect whether you want to be able to drag these or delete them and, and that kind of stuff, so you can have a look there. We're taking the pen and adding it to a motion controller with the press move, uh, giving it a bit of a speed, and turning the mouse move outside to true. And that gives us our results here. Now, one thing, there's a new stop, a stop um, event that is given. And actually, the undo and the drag is all based on that stop. The stop is a little bit tricky because if you keep the if you just do this that's fine it will it will work fine if you do this and kind of hold your finger down so i'm kind of holding down and you see i'm making a bunch of little things there watch what happens those little things may even be just individual lines now so uh, we can undo them and that's what happens until there and redo um, but anyway just some something to watch for that it may be that we the problem is is the pen can be operated in a number of different modes. It might be on a press move, it could just be on a mouse move, it could be on a dragging of the pen object itself, etc. So there's any number of ways that the pen can be moved. We can't necessarily rely on saying if you mouse up then call that a stop. 
because maybe we're not even mousing up, <laughs> that, that kind of thing. So um, it may be that we do some adjustments for that in the future because it can be a little bit confusing. One of the things it might do is it turns this line that I just drew probably into two lines. You see that? Because as we hit that corner, we uh, a stop was triggered because we didn't really move the pen. And I bet you in that move, because we delayed there a little bit, I think we've probably got some crumbles. So here are some crumbles. What do you think? A little bit of a pain sometimes that would, that would mean that our undos are going through a couple of those little crumbles instead. But I don't know. Uh, you want to be able to get exact. I don't I, I want to make it so that you can hold down the finger and and make your line go to the finger. Uh, it's it's the dragging issue. You see how that sort of follows or sorry, the damping issue that follows along. Um, so here we're going to have a bunch of little crumbles on the corners as we undo. So there goes a line, there goes the crumbles, there goes a line, there goes the crumbles. So be it. Anyway, that's where we're at now on the pen. Here are some of the instructions. Drag the segments, control, drag, oh, oh, forgot to show you. So if you hold down the control and then drag, all of them will drag. Undo and redo is control Z and control Y or control shift Z also undoes. Shift click to delete or double click. Uh, to delete and control shift click to delete all control shift click <laughs> they're all gone so that's great those are those are nice they're a little bit harder to implement obviously on mobile you you're gonna have to um, not rely on a keyboard on, on mobile on an iPad or something like that the double click as well it's tricky to double click on an ipad on a thin line so you probably want something like a garbage can and there is a delete method and there's also a delete segment method so now each of these things that are drawn are stored in the paper the paper is what we're seeing here and if we're if cache is true which is the default then this is a bitmap and this is a bitmap, and this is a bitmap. So this is paper.getchild at zero, paper.getchild at one, paper.getchild at uh, two. All right, so if you say, uh, or you could click on this. So if you're on mobile and you just wanted to delete this on clicking, let's, let's do that for us. It would be something like uh, pen, uh, did we name it pen? Yeah, pen.paper. I can try to make this bigger for us. Not a paper transform. Go away, paper transform. <laughs> ben dot paper dot uh, on <clears throat> click or on mouse down. Perhaps it's better. Mouse down. We'll call this function. We'll collect e. This will be important in this case. So this is the event object, and then we can say e dot target dot Oh, uh, it would be more like pen.paper, pen.paper, dot delete, segment, segment, e.target. Oops, that goes here. Probably won't need us an update stage. We might, no, I think the delete uh, does that for us. Okay, so what this is doing is it's deleting a segment, and if you do the delete the segment, you pass in the object. There is just a delete, but the delete is uh, deleting an index. So that becomes a little bit more complicated. That would be pen.paper.getchildindex of e.target. Now, which one would you like? <laughs> so there we are deleting uh, pen.paper an index. Now, there's other times when we want to use the index to delete. So delete uses the index. Delete segment uses the object itself. Seg well, undo this. Boop, 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 boop. Delete segment e.target. And let's see if that works. So I draw, I draw again, and then I click. Oop, didn't work. Did it give us an error? F. 12 error uh, pen dot paper dot delete oh sorry it's just pen not the paper uh, it is the uh, pen dot paper dot uh, 
get child index, but uh, it's the pen that has the delete segment. So my apologies. Let me refresh that here. We draw, we draw again, and we press, and it deletes. Boop. And we undo. So that's now tied in as well. If you use that technique, it's tied in to the, the undo. If you're not doing undos, you could always just remove child. So e.target.removeChild would, would do it. Or remove from, I mean. So e.target.remove from, like so. Uh, that you may need, you need, you may need a stage dot update. Yeah, let's try it. So we click, yeah, it's gone. But we undo, and it only undid the first one. It brings that back, because hmm. that would be in the undo list. But it didn't undo it. So did you see that? Let's try it again. One, two, three. We press it, and I control Z to undo, and it undo undid the drawing of that one, which is in the undo list. So um, just removing the targets not in the undo list, whereas pen.delete segment e.target is in the undo list. We refresh here. One, two, three. We click that to delete it. We control Z and it brings it back. All right, neat o mosquito. That is the pen. Now, maybe I'll just piggyback. There's one more new thing on here. It's not that big a deal for you, I don't think, and it's inherit. But uh, inherit is um, used internally, and it is sort of a big deal internally. It allows us to pass along styles. So an example would be if we set the font, if we set a style for the font of a, a list, for instance, then that style, uh, the, the list doesn't really have uh, a font or any, any text to, to have a font, but it does have a, it does have tabs. So the list is made up of a bunch of tabs. And the tabs don't have anything to put a font on, but the tabs are made up of buttons. And the buttons don't have anything to put font on, but the buttons have labels, and the labels have a font. So that inheritance allows you to set the, say, the color of a font and have that go all the way down through and set it on a label in a list, uh, that type of thing. So we have an example here. It's now inherit is the last parameter at the moment, the last parameter of any of these components, etc. anything that's using styles. If you want, you can inherit and pass in an object literal of styles. And what that will do is it will cause the circle to have these styles. So that's sort of what we're doing, but we're passing that inheritance along in the background of Zim. Uh, Possibly this is handy because if you wanted to, you could dictate an object literal. You might hold that up here. It might be var um, var special or something like that. Uh, special is equal to these things right here. These styles. Badoop. And then we would want to inherit special. And then this circle can inherit special, but also, oh, I hate that. I'm hoping that I can fix Adam so that it doesn't automatically indent after, uh, after. anyway. Uh, we'll make another circle. We will inherit the special from that. I will make this one orange or something like that. And we won't center it because that would be in the same place. So we will pose it at uh, 20 comma 20. So we have one in the top left corner that's going to inherit our special uh, styles. And we've also got the circle, the first circle that's centered, which we'll inherit. And we take a look here. And they both get this outer red border that comes from the special. But you could have done this already by, instead of using inherit, you could have used group like so, oops, group like so. And then this would become uh, style equals, and then we say uh, groups, any group that is called special, we'll get these styles right here, and then there's styles from here. Copy the brackets there. 
All right, so this is how uh, you would normally put that up. It's kind of like a class. We're saying the group called special, and in both cases, this is the group special. And in your main styles, you say, hey, of the groups, special, we'll get these. And we save that up. Well, let's swap it. We'll make this blue. Save this up, and when we refresh, oh, it's broken. What did we do wrong? 11. Special is not defined. Oh, uh, special, special. Quotes on that and quotes on this. So we save that and we refresh here. And there we go. The borders are blue. So that would be the traditional way for, for you guys to do this. But uh, if you want, we can do it how we had it before, and you can piggyback on the inherit, which uh, would allow a, a different way to insert styles into an object. All right. Well, that's a little bit of an extra second chapter. But uh, this one was primarily on the pen, allowing you to do those neat things to um, drag the segments or delete the segments or undo and redo. Fantastic. This has been a what's bubbling at Zim. I am inventor Dan said. <laughs> I almost said inventor Dr. Abstract. <laughs> Choose one or the other. I am Dr. Abstract. And I am also Dan Zen. Uh, have a great day or night. If, you, if you're if you enjoying what's happening here at Zim, come on in and join us on the Zim Slack channel, zimjs.com slash slack. Uh, say hello. Uh, we're growing every day and it would be lovely to have you there. Ciao.